Good morning. This is Wednesday, May the 13th, and we have our Bible Studies for Life lesson today from our Sunday School curriculum. And uh, we'll be looking at serve. Uh, we've been looking at different aspects of the Christian life. And so today uh, we're going to be looking at serve, and we'll be in Galatians chapters 5 and 6. So if you'll take your Bibles and turn to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, we will begin today looking at this word, serve. So uh, let's begin with prayer. Father, we come to you again, and we thank you for such a blessed day. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach us and guide us into all truth. May we be sanctified by your truth today, consecrated unto our great God. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the Bible teaches a lot about serving God. We love him, therefore we serve him. We serve him because we love him. We do everything in our life as unto the Lord because we love him. So the motivation is there. So in Galatians chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 13, 14, and 15 to start with. And in here we see the motivation for our service. It says in verse 13, For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And here's our motivation for doing everything as a believer in Jesus Christ, is our love for our great God and our love for other people that he loves. It says in verse 14, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You want to obey God. You want to fulfill all that God has asked of you, then love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to your neighbor. It doesn't say the ones that are good to you. Your neighbor may be your enemy. He says be good to them. Love them as you love yourself. If we love the people that live around us, if we love the people we run into uh, at the stores and meet and pass on, along the way, if we truly loved people, we wouldn't have to worry about all the details of God's law because they would all be fulfilled. It says in verse 15, But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. You see, that type of non-loving spirit consumes us. We become grumpy old men. We become angry old men. We become a, a group of people just that are soured on the world and no one wants to be around us. There's no joy in our lives. So our motivation for service as Christians is the love of God that dwells within us. Now flip over to chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5 uh, as we think about the attitude of service. Now we looked at the motivation. Love isn't the attitude of our service. Love is the motivation for our service. In verses 1 through 5 of chapter 6, we're going to see the attitude of our service. It says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. We're supposed to have a spirit of gentleness. We're supposed to have a spirit of reconciliation, of restoration. This is our attitude. He says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. When someone in the body hurts, we need to hurt. When they rejoice, we need to rejoice. When we realize someone's going through a difficult time, we need to pray and we need to encourage and we need to help bear that burden. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. If we don't have this attitude to serve, then we're being deceived. We're deceiving ourselves into believing that we're someone that we're really not. We're, we're actually faking it, hoping that we'll make it. Verse 4, But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. We are to look, as Jesus said, take the, take the log out of your eye before you start looking at 
at the little speck in someone else's eye. Look at your own life. Evaluate it. Test it. Make sure you are who you say you are. Don't just say you're a Christian and stick a bumper sticker on your car. But search your heart and make sure your attitude is pure and holy and just. It says, for each will have to bear his own load. We'll have to answer for ourselves. Uh, I won't answer for Hope, my wife, and she won't answer for me. We will answer for ourselves. So our motivation is love, love for God and love for others. And our attitude is to care for one another, to bear one another's burdens, to restore each other and to uplift and encourage each other. This is the attitude of our service. Look down to verse 10. The scope of our service. We've talked about the motivation. We've talked about our attitude. Now the scope of our service. How wide or, or how narrow is our service? In verse 10 says, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. We're supposed to do good. We're supposed to serve. We're supposed to love. We're supposed to care for everyone. Every person we see. Our enemies? Yes. Those who do good to us? Yes. Our family members? Yes. Our neighbors up and down the street? Yes. Do good to everyone. The scope is worldwide. Wherever we find ourselves, we need to be motivated by love to have a pure attitude of service to others. It may be at the grocery store. It may be at the gas station, at the bank. It may be at Walmart or Target. It may be walking through the neighborhood, on vacation or trip. We need to serve as Jesus served us. Heavenly Father, may we truly, truly be servants of our great God. May we truly, truly, not deceive in ourselves, but know that we are motivated to bear one another's burdens. And it doesn't matter who they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed today as you serve Jesus who loved you and gave his life for you.